there comes a time in a person's life when truth has to be told. There comes a time in your life when you have to tell yourself the truth. You may choose to deny it. You may choose to hide issues. You may choose to ignore it. But there comes a time in your life when you have to face up to issues that have occurred in your life, issues that you know that you have not forgiven, issues that you know that you have not dealt with, issues that you know are a source of great pain and hurt in your life. There has to be a time, and I'm sensing for some of you that are listening, today is a day that God wants you to begin to deal with these issues. And in this segment where I'm going to be talking to you about how to recover from family wounds, wounds that not strangers caused to you, wounds that uh, not really neighbors, people that are neighbors caused to you, but wounds that hurt so deeply because they were inflicted on you by people that you trust, trusted and still trust, people that you love, and people that you care so much about. And some of us, we go through these things and we just brush them aside. But here's an issue. Most of these hurts, wounds, rejections, verbal abuse, physical abuse, or maybe even sexual abuse, those things have a way, the devil has a way of anchoring them in the foundation of our lives and using them to distort the rightful image that God wants us to have of ourselves and of God. I've had an opportunity, my wife and I had had an opportunity of talking to several people in counseling sessions and you hear people say, well, why did God allow this to happen to me? Okay, why did God allow my parents to be so abusive to me? We have issues where some people in a marriage situation are unable to show affection. I mean, just verbal or just physical affection to their mate because of what they went through with their father, where their father when they were very little, was very violent. And, and there's so many people, there's so many women who can't even relate as women because they were raised in situations that the psychologists call dysfunctional situations. We know that with God, nothing is dysfunctional because through the blood of Jesus, through the power of God, God is able, Jesus died on the cross so that every situation that you have or you, that will ever come against you can be resolved by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So thank God. But here's a simple question. Uh, do you like the way your behavior is? Are you the type of person that it doesn't take much to anger you? Uh, and you just flare up, and it doesn't take much for you to get into rage. Uh, are you the type of person that when people hurt you, I mean, it's like the hurt goes on and on and on and on. It's so difficult for you to forgive and let it go. Are you the type of person that when you are wrong, you find it very difficult to say, yes, I'm wrong, uh, forgive me. I, and you feel like, I cannot tell you that I'm wrong. Do you have issues with control? If you have some of these issues that I'm talking about, more than likely there are hurts in the foundation of your life. There are wounds that you've not dealt with. And today, I'm going to show you what to do so you can get the healing that God has wrought on the cross through Jesus Christ for you. The first is, let's go to the Bible, Psalms, opening to Psalms 27, verse 10. Psalms 27, verse 10, it says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Praise God. King David is no stranger to family wounds. If you read his story, you realize that when God sent prophet Samuel to the house of Jesse to anoint one of the sons that the parents didn't think much of David 
that they sent him out to go and tend the sheep, while the other sons whom the parents felt were more qualified to be king were left at home. I mean, the situation was so horrible that even Samuel had to remind Jesse that he had another son. He said, these are all, your, all the sons you have. Surely God has sent me to your house to anoint somebody. And none of the sons that you've presented, are the, God is not giving me a confirmation on them. That's when the father remembered David. And they had to send uh, uh, someone out to the fields to get him. Then we can, I can give you more stories. Then when the father sent David to go and bring some food to the brothers, the eldest brother saw him and then started telling him off and telling him, why are you here? You're too nosy. Telling him off. I mean, things happened to him. David that could have hurt him. So when he wrote this, when, if my father and my mother forsake me, God will adopt me. God will take me up. And, and here's an issue. I'm not trying to help, cause you to go and start reliving and rethinking all the hurts and pains that your parents inflicted on you. Here's a, the reason why I don't want you to go there. Listen to this. Wounded people wound others. So if your parents hurt you, emotionally, physically abusive, uh, they were very abusive to you, or even sexually. Before you start getting all upset, remember this. If you have an opportunity to talk to your parents, you'll realize that more than likely they were also abused. They were also wounded. But thank God that you're hearing this because God can use you to stop the demonic spirit that is moving in your family line, abusing people generation after generation. So what you do after this teaching is going to be significant. So I'm not trying to get you right now to begin to be upset about your parents. Your parents hurt you, but listen, more than likely they were hurt themselves and they were just perpetrating what they, were, what they learned or what they went through back to you. So you have an opportunity right now through this teaching to not to do the same thing to your children, not to do the same thing to the other siblings and your family. So there, there are issues that a lot of people that have family wounds that they haven't dealt with. And then they go out and they get married and they bring that wound into the marriage and the marriage becomes disastrous. So here are some things that I want you to look at. Even when you open your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 42, all the way to Genesis chapter 50, and we talk about the life of Joseph. When we talk about the life of Joseph, you could see that in today's world, the, the way his dad structured the family was kind of really dysfunctional. And the dad showed favoritism to him, because he was a child of his old age. And then Joseph, as a young lad, didn't have discretion, didn't have wisdom to keep some of his dreams to himself. And many things transpired, but you could see in that family jealousy, envy, hatred, strife, that even led to Joseph being sold to the Midianites. And then Joseph finally finding himself into Potiphar's house, and then facing the temptation with part of his wife where he refused to do immorality and was then thrown into prison. And then but in all these things, you see, and then finally the Lord exalted Joseph and made him a prime minister in the land. But watch this. When you study this, you see in Genesis chapter 42 when the brothers had to come back to Egypt to get sustenance because there was famine in the land. You can study the life of Joseph and see what he went through. All the pain that his brothers cost him. Uh, they beat him up. They lied about him. They told the dad that he was dead. And they forgot about him. He went through so much family abuse, so much wound. But yet, Joseph was able to forgive the brothers. 
he was able to forgive them. But before we get into on how you should forgive them, let me, let me give you some things that are going to strengthen you. There are some scriptures I would like you to go over, I'd like to go over with you. Praise God. Some scriptures. The first one is Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. Galatians chapter 6, from verse 1 to 2. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Praise God. Sometimes in life, we, we, you can say, well, listen, what they did to me was so much, I don't want to talk to my brothers anymore. I don't want to talk to my sisters anymore. I don't want to talk to my parents anymore. Listen, yes, what they did to you was so bad. But remember this, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Okay? So listen to this. Your father hurt you. It's true. Your mother hurt you. It's true. Your sisters abused you. It's all true. But remember this. The devil used them to hurt you. The devil used them to abuse you because the devil was trying to kill God's purpose in your life. You understand that? So, so, so now that you're born again, you're more spiritual than they are. The purpose of this teaching is to equip you, to challenge you to have mercy upon them. Okay, to forgive them because unless you forgive them, you are not going to get the fullness of your healing. You're not going to get wholeness. You're not going to get to the level where God wants you to be. Remember this, at the cross, the, the people were mocking Jesus. But when Jesus was dying on the cross, on the cross, what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Jesus said, Lord, forgive them, because they're ignorant. All right. Now, but when you read Matthew chapter 6, from verse 14 to 15, where the Bible says, Unless you forgive those, this is my paraphrase, if you forgive not those that trespass against you, he says, neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. So God says, Jesus said on the cross, I forgive them because they are ignorant. But in your personal relationship with your family members, I admonish you to forgive them not because they're ignorant, no, but forgive them because I forgave you. So do you see what is happening here? And then when you go to Matthew chapter 18 and read on the parable of the unforgiving servant, and the Lord begins to say that, that since they, there is a story of two servants, one was forgiven, okay, a huge sum of money, and then the other servant Oh, that one that was forgiven, very little money. The one that received forgiveness went and held the servant that owed him just very small amount of money. And when the Lord of the servant found out, the Lord of the servant was, was upset, irate, because he said, how could I have forgiven you so much? And you go and hold someone that did something very little compared to what you've done to me. And you hold them and asking them to pay you all. And what happened? He said that the Lord of the servant that owed a lot of money revoked his forgiveness and turned him over to tormentors. So you see, if you, people in your family has hurt you, even if your wife has hurt you, your husband has hurt you, your children has hurt you, or you've hurt your siblings, or your siblings has hurt you, I'm talking about wounds in the family, because the family is the bedrock of Christianity. That's where Christianity begins. The Christianity in the life of a pastor begins in his home. Christianity in the life of a Christian begins in the Christian's home. And the Lord said, because the man that was forgiven a lot of money did not forgive, he gave, turned him over to tormentors. So do you feel like there are a lot of problems in your life? 
a lot of, you, I mean, you're stressed out, you're anxious. I want you to think about your foundation. Perhaps there are people in your family that has hurt you. People that heard about your dream and laughed like the brothers of Joseph laughed. You told them that you were going to be this person and they laughed. People that the only thing they specialize in, in telling you all the bad things about you. Listen, the Bible says in Galatians 6, you who are spiritual, forgive them. Forgive them. You have to forgive them and not only forgive them, but restore them. Okay, here's another scripture that I'd like you to, to listen to, to, to pay attention to. It's from Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 from verse 1 to 2. It says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Then even verse 3, so, so powerful. He says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I give Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Praise God. Do you know what? Before you can even start thinking about, you know what? People in my family has hurt me so much, I just want to cut them off. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I don't want to call them on the phone. I, don't, I just don't want to deal with them. Let me tell you something. The Lord said to tell you this. Yes, they hurt you, but I protected you. Yes, they hurt you, but remember, you have also hurt the Lord. And the Lord forgave you. Remember this in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I am not here trying to defend your mother or your father, or your brothers or sisters. No, but I'm here trying to tell you this is the path you should go. This is the right path. This is God's path. And this is the only path that can give you permanent healing. So you have to forgive them. And yes, what they did was bad, but in spite of all that was done against you, you still survived. Why? Because God's hand was on you. And you may say, well, why did, where was God? Why did God even allow this to happen to me? Try to God, there are questions that I don't have the answers to, that you don't have the answers to, that no one has the answers to. But this is what we could do. Well, the hand that was dealt to you. Remember 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 16 says, No, no man after the flesh. I can boldly tell you this, that yes, what was done to you was bad, but I can boldly tell you, based on the word of God, that it was the devil using those people to do those things to you because he was trying to kill you. But look at this. The devil tried to kill you, and he didn't succeed. Hallelujah. The devil tried to suppress you. He didn't succeed. Hallelujah. God's hand still protected you and if uh, and, and listen to this Romans chapter 6 verse 16 says to whom you yield yourself yourself servants to obey to whose servants you are to whom you obey so there are people people in your family who had yielded their minds to the devil and the devil made them do those things that have been done against you so don't hold that grudge against them. The devil will keep on winning. And the issue is that as a Christian, you don't believe in defeat. Why? Because Jesus Christ came and defeated the devil for you. 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose, the Son of God has manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay? Praise God. Here are more scriptures that I would like us to look at. In Job chapter 23, verse 16, one of the powerful things that it says, it says, For God maketh my heart soft. Yes, sometimes you can go through abuse, you can go through situations in your life that the devil has designed in order to harden your heart. You know, in order to make you better, in order to make you isolate yourself, not wanting to be around people, not wanting anybody to be around you. I mean, for 
many Christmas holidays, you had the means to go back home and celebrate with your family members, but you stayed away from them. You, you, I mean, you live in the same town with your parents, okay, but you don't even call on the phone. And when you visit them, you don't want to be around them. Why? Because of the hurt, because of the wounds, because whenever you're around them, they get hurt. They, they hurt you. Excuse me. Whenever you're around them, they hurt you and the relationship turns sour. But let me tell you, the blood of Jesus is able to heal your family members. The blood of Jesus is able to heal you. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, the Bible says, Believe in thy Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy household. So running away from your family members is not the way out. Okay? I want you to pray for your family members. Ask God to forgive them. And by you standing in a gap for them, God will use you as an instrument, answer your prayers, and either use you to save them or send laborers to them who will minister the word of God to them and they will be saved and delivered. Praise God. Amen. Then in Psalms 37, verse 8, it says, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Yes, some of you out there, the things that were done to you were so horrible, you don't even want to hear about it. The only thing you want to do is you want to pay them back. You want to just revenge. But let me tell you this, that is not the right way to go. Okay? If you revenge, then God can help you. Why? Because God said in his word that vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. If your family members has hurt you, if your brothers has hurt you, the first thing I'd like you to do is to, right now, just get on your knees and confess that to the Lord. Just tell the Lord the truth. Okay? Expose the whole thing. God knows the whole thing. Don't deny that you were hurt. Don't deny that you were abused. Yes, it happened. But I'm not trying to tell you now to go and fight them. That won't work. First thing is settle this issue with the Lord. And just tell God how painful it was. I mean, release it. Okay? Don't hold it inside. Release it. Okay? Then the next thing you need to do is ask God to give you the courage. Okay? To forgive them. You have to forgive them. Okay? You have to forgive them. And because Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says that the Holy Spirit, that God gives us the Holy Spirit who shed, the Holy Spirit sheds the love of God abroad in our heart. Yes, it is possible for you to love your husband again. It is possible for you to love your wife again. It is possible for you to get along with your brothers and sisters again. It is possible for you to love your parents again. And some parents out there, definitely, it is still possible through Christ for you to love your children again. Okay? I'll continue this on this line on what to do, how to recover from family wounds in our next segment. But right now, let me lead you into a prayer. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Because I'm in desperate need of a savior. Lord, I've been hurt, wounded, abused, abandoned. Lord, I need you. Please save me, Jesus. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. And I believe in my heart that you came and died for my sins. Save me now, Lord. Amen. And I want you to also pray for your family members. I didn't say contact them yet. Wait. I'm still going to do the next segment so we can lead you on what to do. and So that when you contact them, you've dealt with the pain. You've dealt with the hurt. So you're calling them on the phone. Wouldn't be a, a, a platform for the devil to use to destroy you and your family members. Praise God. Remember, to whom much is given, much is required. God is forgiving you. And God is saying to you today, Forgive your family members. God bless you. Don't give up. You don't believe in defeat. You're more than a conqueror. Amen.
Thank you for listening to our broadcast. Please visit our website at www.mountainsofpraise.org. You can email us at mountainsofpraise at yahoo.com. Please come and visit us personally whenever you are in our area. Remember, God loves you and we love you. Remember this, no matter how hard your situation is, because of Jesus Christ's shed blood, you will not be defeated.